Good evening. Hello, everybody. Come on in. So now it's just replay viewers for the first 24 hours. <laughs> Things are changing. Times are changing. Good evening. Hello. Hey, Janet. How are you? Hey, guys. Uh, a little bit of getting used to. Okay. So we have to do... I am feeling better. I am. I am. I am. So... Hey Tracy, so we've got to do landscape, which is going to tell me, <laughs> tell me ways to organize. <laughs> it's going to take me a little bit to get used to. So, oh, thank you. So this is going to take a little bit of getting used to, because I'm not used to landscape view while we're scoping. But interesting enough, when you input it from catch to YouTube, it was fine. So, they must have, you know, special things. And the camera's over here, and I'm looking over here reading the comments. So, you're just going to have to forgive my wandering eye. So, you guys ready to get started? I have a lot of information for you guys tonight. Hello, good evening. Um, I even took notes so that I could, like, stay on track. I have a lot of stuff for you guys tonight. Hey, Rachel. So we're going to talk about um, how to make a schedule and more of a routine, as I like to call them, because I think routines stick. Schedules are more things that you can't control the time. You need to keep it at a certain time. Baseball schedules, school schedules, work schedules, that's the type of stuff that you need to do. In this landscape view, I'm telling you guys, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, I may have to flip the camera around because I really don't like it very much. And then I'll just edit my own videos somehow. I don't know. We'll see. Hello. Okay. So you like it? Shani, how do you not like look straight? Like I want to read the comments over here and the camera's over there. So, it's more like that way, maybe a little bit. <laughs> you mean my mess over here? This gigantic, huge mess. <laughs> okay, so routines. Let's talk about routines and how we're going to set them. It does? Okay. I feel like I'm looking off into the day zone. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> so, the first thing... No, it's the camera. Um, we have to make some adjustments since now all of our videos have to go on either some type of video server or YouTube. So, it'll take a little while before we, get, we all get used to it. But there's quite a bit that we have to do. All of my videos are now on YouTube, though. Um... Yeah, so, but all of my videos are over there. I really haven't done any editing. I'm not really going to. They're just there. From here on forward, every time we have like a planning 101 um, night, I'm going to date it so that you could easily go through and figure out where you're at, what date it was on. Um, so we're going to do that. So, um, the YouTube is the same as my name, Chaotic Blessing. So you should be able to find it. Um, I did. I kept them all. They're all there, but I'm not editing. I'm not moving them around. I did create a playlist called Planning 101, so you can go do it. I cannot promise you that they're in order because Catch did this really thing, weird thing and just kind of like input it all, and it's not really in a great order as it would be if it was recorded. So... You know what? I looked at that, Shani, and it said as long as I wasn't monetizing my videos, then I was okay to use it on the songs that I had. And so I really only had like five of them, and I'm not monetizing my videos. So I just kind of left it for right now because 
I mean, it clearly said just as long as you're not monetizing your videos. So, you guys forgive the trolls because they're in <coughs> full force. Yeah, so I just didn't bother with it. I was like, I, I'm not selling anything on here. I don't have ads on it. So, thank you guys. Okay, so let's get to talking. So the first thing about a routine is you need something to record it down in, right? So you need a planner. You need a planner, um, you know, a happy planner, something that you're going to put your routine in that you can refer back to it on a daily basis because it's something that's going to take some time to get used to. So that's your first thing. So if you don't have a planner, I don't know what you're doing here first of all. No, I'm just kidding. You need to get something. A piece of paper works too. Just a piece of paper with a notebook. Um, and so kind of what I've had some people ask me because they have days that um, are different. So maybe they have two days that are the same and then they have three days that are the same and then they go back to those two days that are the same. So you might have to have two different types of routines for those days. And that's fine. What you need to find out is what flows during that day. How does it flow naturally? Um, someone, I think Monica had said, well, my husband has, you know, a day off in the middle of the week. When he has a day off, we just don't do anything. Okay, well then that's fine. So that's one of your weekend days. So that's one of your relaxed days. You don't have to have every single day jam-packed to the bones um, to feel like you've accomplished something. Having a relaxed day or a family time day is accomplishing something. So put that down as that is what the routine is for that day. It's just to chill. There is no schedule. Um, maybe you do have a doctor's appointment a day. You have little things, but you don't have to say, you know, I'm doing this, 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 and this. Okay, so that is part of routine. A lack of things is also a routine. Thanks for inviting followers. I appreciate it. Um, the next thing you're going to do is when you're looking at those days, you're going to kind of organize what needs to be done every single day. So I'm going to use my life for an example. Um, Monday through Friday, I have to get the kids up. I have to get them ready for school. They need to eat breakfast. They need to get dressed. We need to get our backpacks. Those are the type of things that have to get done. Okay. They have to go to school. Then I have to pick up my preschooler at 1145 and then I have to get my other my next child at 345 those things are have to so I'm gonna put those down into my routine and I'm gonna set those for those sections of time okay and then what I'm gonna do for the rest of my day is I'm gonna build my routine around those things I cannot change all right the things you cannot change is your schedule the things that you can change and that are flexible is your routine. So in the morning, I don't necessarily have to make the kids get dressed before we eat breakfast. And we don't necessarily have to get dressed before we brush our teeth. Um, I used to, but now my routines are so habitual, I don't have to. Um, but that takes time to get to. Now, if I'm going to have an off day or beginning of summertime, I will write my routine down in my planner because it's changed from what we are used to for, you know, nine months. So I'll change my routine and adapt it. Well, the kids don't need to get up as early, even though they tend to. <laughs> so I will write my routine down and go, okay, this is kind of what we need our summer days to look like. Um, I school my kids during the summertime and so we'll have school time. So I still have to write it down in the beginning but after a couple days in, we're in that flow. I don't really have to anymore. Um, so, hey, Brittany, how are you? Um, so you're going to kind of give yourself a little bit of structure to work within that routine. All right? You guys ready for the next step? <laughs> I don't want to go too quickly for you guys because I have a lot that I want to get through tonight um, and we may have to dedicate another evening to this but I do want to get through all of it so you guys have the guts to work with all right the next part that you're going to do so you have your have to's done all right in those have to's 
you have things that kind of lead up to it. So I have to take the kids to school at nine o'clock. What leads up to that? And that is the getting them out of bed, getting them dressed. And so those things are more routine. I don't have a time like, okay, the kids have to be up by seven o'clock. If they're tired and they sleep in till 730, I can work around that because I know the routine of things that need to get done. So um, you're gonna think about those groupings of routines. Basically, you're going to organize the tasks that need to be done. Those are the things that you need to work on, and you're going to organize them and group them together. And so I group together my morning stuff. Those are the tasks, and that's our little routine that we go through. Sometimes, like I said, sometimes they brush their teeth before they finish getting dressed, and sometimes we read books before we um, have breakfast. Sometimes we do after, but the same things kind of get done. Yeah, if you're not used to it, you need to prepare the night before. Um, my children pick out their clothes the night before, and so they're already done, which helps out a lot, especially the girls, because um, I have one who wants to wear a dress every single day now, and so um, it just helps out if her clothes are already picked out, because then I don't have to fight and argue with her in the morning, because she picked it out the night before. Um, Daddy looks at the weather, checks the weather for them, says this is what the weather's going to be like, and then he help you know, they pick out their clothes, and it's laid out. And then I have the older kids do the same thing just so that that when they get up in the morning It's one last thing that we all have to um, discuss <laughs> All of their kid all of their school stuff all of their shoes are in the mudroom. My kids do not keep shoes in their room So all of their shoes are in the mudroom their coats are in the mudroom their backpacks are in the mudroom It's in a central location. So in the morning. There is no well, Where's this shoe? Where's this? Where's my backpack? That has been eliminated because we created a space for them and for me to keep everything in one central location. Because I, for some of you who were with us um, a couple nights before, I talked about um, getting to the place where you are maintaining. Well, when you create places for things, then you can get to that spot of maintaining. And it is wonderful. <laughs> It is a blessing beyond blessings um, for a mom. You set the table for breakfast the night before. That's awesome. I would, except my dog keeps on thinking that there's food on the table, so he takes the plates even though there's nothing on the table. So <coughs> You have space. Well, I don't tolerate the shoes not being put away. <laughs> so... Um, Shoes get put away, you know, it's, they come in the house, where do your shoes go? Um, they take off the shoes, it's where do your shoes go? I mean, I nail it right on, immediately, I'm just on, uh, why are your shoes in the middle of the floor? Is that where they go? No, stop what you're doing, go get your, pick up your shoes and take them, you know. And if they fight and him and haul about I'm like, okay, then they'll go in the trash. Exactly, just spank them. <laughs> so, um, it is, it's a habit train for me. Because the moment I slack and I don't stay on top of it, then they slack. And then I'm the one to blame, not them. And so I hold all that responsibility because in our family, this is the responsibility that I've been giving. This is my job is to maintain the home and get it to a maintainable spot. And then everybody in this home works together. Jason backs me up and so because I stay on top of it, he can help me stay on top of it and likewise. And so um, if he sees shoes to go, like today, Michaela didn't want to take off her soccer shoes. Michaela, where do your soccer shoes go? In my bin, go put them in your bin. Where do your socks go? Like she played sports tonight, she had soccer and all their sports stuff goes in the mudroom too because I don't want to spend 30 minutes looking for her shin guards every Monday and Wednesday because she decided to take them off in the playroom and they are under piles of dress up clothes. <clears throat> yeah, so so those are some of the things that cr help create these routines that we're talking about. Um, and they become second nature when we, as adults, um, really push ourselves to do it. And it really just takes a mindset of, I'm not gonna slack. I'm just gonna keep on going, I'm gonna keep on going. And we do, we sound like broken records, it happens, it gets frustrating, and then we want to sit back on the couch and go, forget it, I'm just gonna sit here and watch Bravo because I don't care right now. And I have days like that. I take days and I'm like, that's it, I quit, I'm done. Can't tell you how many times I've quit being a mom. <laughs> like, that's it, I quit, I'm 
done. I am no longer mom. You guys find somebody else to be your maid, to be your cook, to be your chauffeur. I'm done. Um, and they get the picture <laughs> pretty quickly. But then a lot of that is just, I needed to take that mental time out and go, okay, I'm not doing what I need to be doing. Therefore, they're not doing what they need to be doing. So I need to get better because I'm the one that's lacking. Because the only reason why there's 10 million toys out here is because I didn't help them remind them to pick up when you're done playing with one thing. So the only person I really have to be upset is myself. So it's a, it's a check all the time. Check them. <laughs> yes, you do get those texts. I said, I'm like, that's it. I quit my job. I'm done. I put my two weeks notice in. <laughs> so, okay. So we're organizing our tasks for the day. So you have maybe your morning stuff. My mid morning things have changed now that uh, business has changed. And so, um, but they still are very similar. I get Addie's schoolwork ready for her because she's going to work on her school stuff. I get, you know, I set up a PlayStation for her to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, her, like, little play area to work on Play-Doh. I grab whatever I need to go up into my office. I make sure that she sat with the babysitter and so that they're all taken care of. Um, before I go upstairs, I make sure that I put some laundry in the washing machine and I've transferred whatever's in the wash into the dryer because I've usually started a load of wash before the kids go to school and so that's ready. So these have become part of my routine. And then I don't have to have a whole entire day full of laundry because I do laundry every day. And I usually try to get it started in the morning so that there's still time to fold and put away by the end of the night because I don't want any baskets. Um, well, right now, <laughs> right now I have somebody who comes every single day and I also have somebody who comes and volunteers in my shop. So this is a very unique situation because this is new to me. I have not had this ever before. So <laughs> I'm telling you this now, but I can also tell you that I've had the days with four kids working my uh, job, um, being that home mom, teaching them school, um, because I do homeschool my children through preschool. So um, I've also done the career where I left my home and I went and had my job and I had to come back. So if you guys are out of situation, I could probably help you with it because I've done it. I've done all of those scenarios um, and having somebody come to my home um, is very new. It's just happened in the past month. And so my routine has had to change um, quite a bit because I need to think through, just like if I was leaving my house to go to work, um, I need to think through in the morning what needs to be done. Do I need to start dinner before I go up to my office? Tell <laughs> you're the queen of leaving baskets. I used to be. Cassie, I used to be. I hated putting laundry away. Um, <laughs> so I just made it a goal. It's, I don't, because to me, it started to make it feel like um, my house was cluttered because I had baskets and I had laundry sitting all over the place. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like, we just need to get it done. And so it's been a very diligent effort over the past year. I'm still not the greatest at it. I'll tell you that my husband is amazing at it and he just really helps me a lot. You know, I'll be like, I have two loads of laundry to put away and he'll just come and help me in our room. Um, I have the two older kids. They do all of their laundry now. They wash, they dry, they fold, and they put away. If they need help, then they can ask for help, but they are responsible. Um, a husband that helps, guess what? I'm just now getting used to it. I've never had a husband that helped before. I never have, ever. Um, I'm almost 40 years old, and this is the first time in my life um, since I was 19. I've never had anybody help me. And so this is, it's a treat. Believe me, it's a treat. But um, it's had I had to change my mindset on a lot of things. Yeah, being a stay-at-home mom is the hardest, hardest job ever. Hardest job ever. Um, yeah, I have a lot to be grateful for. And I'm still getting used to it because sometimes I'm just like, oh, I'll just do it. I'll do it. Um, that's fine. Go take them home. So, 
So then you think about your blocks of time during your day, and that's where I want you to start setting your routines. So like I said, I put a load of laundry in in the morning as the kids are getting ready. There's no reason why. It takes me less than two minutes to put it in the washing machine, and it starts running. Because my thought process is, the laundry's running while I'm doing other things, um, then I'm accomplishing two things at the same time. <laughs> so I get to check off double <laughs> the amount of things and I won't be so swamped later on. And I don't want to be swamped on the weekend. I want to be able to enjoy my weekends with my family. I want to be able to have time to sit down and relax and I don't want to go, ah, oh, I have like 12 loads of laundry because I literally would have 12 loads of laundry easily. So that's something that I have built into my routine. So little things like that. Yeah, yeah, although I do like, hang, excuse me, hanging my laundry when I can, but I'm glad I don't have to scrub it in the little bucket. Um, so think about those type of things when you're setting your routine. And then go through each time block in your day that you have, that you don't have things that have to be done and start thinking about how you can develop some type of routines. And the one thing that's really gonna help you with this is prioritizing your task. Um, you can do this on a weekly basis and you can do this on a daily basis. Yeah, it does, it does. I say do, you know, one to two loads of laundry every day. And you don't have hardly anything on the weekend. Um, I assign out days to my children so that has helped the larger my family's um, gotten, the more I've had to do that. And so nobody's fighting over the machines and I can still squeeze in, you know, a load of towels if I need to, if it's Kendall's day or if it's Coda's day or sheets or something like that, just because it's their day. But I know that they know that's the time that they need to get their laundry done. So yeah, it keeps it to a manageable amount, exactly. Yay! Yay! So let's think about prioritizing our task. I, I particularly like when planners are set up this way, and I'm going to show you. Um, we'll use April for example. So in the Happy Planner, you know, they have like the section in the month, and they also have that section in the week, okay? So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll write things that need to get done or that I would like for them to get done during that month or during that week. And then I can start prioritizing them and finding spots in my week that they will fit in. And then I always have a list of things of, well, it'd be nice to get that done, but I don't have to get it done. Like organizing photos or working on my filing. Um, Yeah, it is a big fight. I still fight with my kids sometimes, and my rule is you don't help with chores and you don't get to go do anything. And you can mope and pout all you want, but till you get them done, no friends, no phone, no nothing till it gets done. And it's hard to stick to. It's tough to stick to. It is. But now I have it so. My 10 year old, who I'll use for example this weekend, which was really great. He played on Friday night. They're building this fort with his friend down in the woods and he wanted to play on Saturday. Um, and so Sunday morning goes, and we're like, okay, you know, he's like, well, can I do this? And I said, well, he goes, well, I, let me rephrase that. Can I go do this after I get my chores done because I know I need to do all my chores today because I didn't do them yesterday. And I was like, Shh, well, get all your stuff done and we'll talk about it. Um, and so he did and then he wanted the basketball hoop up so he had to take care of the sand going in it. So it was like he still got to do something he wanted to do but it was a reward. And he scheduled his time. Yeah, there's a lot of different systems out there and there's a lot of systems that can work. You just got to figure out what works for your kids. I'll tell you the one trick. Find what motivates your child because every child is motivated by something different. And work within that, work within that frame because their personality is gonna give you plenty to work with. <coughs> there is a lot, there is, definitely is, but it takes consistency on our parts. We're the adults 
and we need to be the enforcers and we have to be consistent. The moment you're not consistent, they smell weakness. Children smell weakness and they know they can take advantage of it. And they can go like this, squeeze their way in and make that gap go like this. They just do it. They just do it. Terrible twos with the one due in June. Yeah, so and those are different. I mean, you know, you're you're dealing with a completely, completely different age range. And a two-year-old's not gonna do chores. But what they will do is they will help clean alongside mommy because they think it's cool. Um, so give them a rag, make a game out of it, teach them why they're young and they think it's fun. Uh, those are a couple of, you know, things that I have done. So anyways, we're going to prioritize our task. Whether you want to list number one, number two, number three, that day that it needs to get done, or A, B, and C, or anything marked A needs to get done on Monday, anything marked B has to be, get done on Tuesday. Um, so... Decide how you're prioritizing. Are you prioritizing on a daily basis or on a weekly basis? And then that's going to help you develop your routine too. So if, you know, you have a doctor's appointment on Thursday and you have paperwork that needs to be filled out. So I would say on Monday or Tuesday, that needs to be a priority A or B. You need to get that done because you have a deadline coming up. So things that have a deadline obviously take a higher <laughs> stance on your list of when it needs to get done. Then the next thing that you're going to do on some of those things that you're kind of looking at is figure out how long it takes you to do. And I kind of hinted at this last week where we talked about really taking like a time block or a sheet of paper and recording down what you're doing throughout your day. So if you are eating breakfast and it takes you 30 minutes to eat your breakfast, but in reality, you were on your phone and eating breakfast, probably doesn't take you 30 minutes to eat breakfast. Probably takes you 15, but you ate slower because you were on your phone, which is fine. If you have time during your day, have that your relaxed time, you know. Check Facebook during breakfast, okay? Well, then you're not going to check Facebook again until lunchtime or until your break because you've done an hour's worth of work and you reward yourself with an hour's worth of work for 10 minutes sitting down socializing. Um, and you want to build in those reward times for yourself throughout your day. <sighs> Am I spying on you? I told you I've done it all. <laughs> I've had to have it. I've had to break the habits, I've had the habits again, I've had to break them again. So, I wasn't joking when I said, throw me a scenario and I probably have done it. <laughs> um, so you want to schedule a block of time. It doesn't have to be from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock, this is what I'm going to do. We don't need to be that strict. You can just say, during this time frame, these are things that need to get done. Um, my daughter comes home at 11.45 and they like to, she likes to play when she gets home from school. And so I don't prepare lunch. I don't start preparing lunch at 11 or 11.15 so that it's ready when she gets home. I wait until she gets home and then I work on preparing lunch because they just want to play anyways. And so that gives me a little bit more time in the morning to get some work done. And then I can stop, do, um, yeah, you have your chunks of time. Do the whole school thing, have her come home, how was your day, look at your paperwork, you guys go play, I'll prepare lunch for you, they eat lunch, they want to play a little bit more, so I clean up lunch, they play a little bit more, and then we do nap time. So that's my block of time, and it it's just natural, it just flows, I'm not forcing anything, I'm not stressed, if they don't go down, um, I work way too many. <laughs> I work way too many. Um, uh, right now, anywhere from 8 to 12, sometimes 14 hours a day. It depends on the day. Um, I don't stress anymore whether or not they go down at 2 o'clock or they don't get down until 2.15. And why don't I stress? Because I don't have to have them on a military schedule. It's okay if they're just playing and having fun and we just naturally go to nap time. <laughs> hey, Bluetooth is good for in the shower. You can hear pretty well if you pump it through a Bluetooth speaker. And so, and then during nap time, 
we I have another block of time before the next child needs to be picked up from school that I can utilize and so I utilize that time first of all hopefully it's you know they're taking a nap and so I can do things that I really just need to focus on excuse me whether it's working scoping for you guys um, I need to go through bills maybe I need to make some phone calls that's a great time for me to make my phone calls so I usually typically do not do any of my phone calls in the morning I usually do them in the afternoon because it's quiet and I know I'm not gonna get interrupted because the morning phone calls are ridiculous um, I clean throughout my day and then we have um, larger areas have specific days like Saturdays um, all the bathrooms are getting cleaned and Saturdays is the day that we like sweep and mop um, throughout the week I will will sweep up the floors will vacuum um, major dusting gets done on the weekend and we all pitch in everybody has an area that they work on and they pitch on and then for the rest of it I will I'll show you my house if you want to see it because <laughs> it's clean um, for the rest of it we clean as we go so at night we do the dishes we wipe the countertops down we wipe the table down we sweep the floor if it needs to be swept um, if like I'll do the living room tables a couple times during the week a lot of times it's done in the mornings when I'll, I only have one child at home because she likes to help me and so I'll take one coffee table and she'll take another one and we just wipe them down real quick and those get done a couple times a week and then the big stuff um exactly down lemon lane why I can't remember your first name um I'm at the stage of right now where we're maintaining um because the house stays picked up for the most part oh that's right Kiel Kiel did I say it right Kiel ah oh, I have a hard time with that one um <laughs> I have gotten to the spot other than my office um, it's it's not ready yet but everywhere else we've gotten to a spot of just maintaining so things are you are picked up they're put away they have a spot and so the cleaning is really easy because I can do a few things throughout the week we can do the big stuff you know like on a Friday evening or a Saturday afternoon and then just be done <clears throat> like Sunday, we spent the entire day Sunday outside getting how um, yard plans done and different things. I ended up sleeping the majority of Saturday because I didn't feel good, and that can be done because I have worked and worked and worked to get to a spot of maintaining. Um, when some of you saw, well, see, you have some rooms, so that's great. Like my kids' rooms. They're not ones on my list where I'm like, this has to be in a state of maintaining all the time. I, I can close the door. And guests aren't going upstairs to go see my children's rooms. So when guests walk in, they are going to see the playroom, which is not always maintained. It's, you know, a playroom. And that's why it has doors on it, even though there's French doors and they have glass so you can totally see in it. <laughs> but the toys aren't spilling into the living room. So you can walk in, the living room is picked up, there may be a couple things out on a side table, but no big deal, right? Um, yeah, I, well, you know what, I have, um, I have kids from the entire neighborhood all the time. They're always in my house. Um, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, one of my big tasks that I have been um, really tackling and making sure I stay on top of is my countertop. Um, I have one particular countertop in my kitchen that uh, was just a collection zone. Like I just allowed things to just be put on it. I'd be like, I'll deal with it later. And it just would get cluttered and tons of paperwork. And I have made it a priority of no. This countertop is going to be cleaned off. There's barely going to be anything on there. I have one little tray at the end of the corner. If anything needs to be kept, that's where it's at. Everything else is dealt with. Um, and if it's a pile that I need to take care of and I don't I don't want to take care of what the kids when they're awake, I want to do it at evening, then that's fine. The rest of it is cleared off because it just was a collection zone. 
um, very similar to how some people use their dining room table or a coffee table in their living room. It's just, just this collection of just junk. And I said no more because when you walk into my house, it's an open concept and you can see it. And it automatically made my house look dirty. And it wasn't. Yep. Neighborhood kids clean up after themselves as if they eat dinner or house, they take their plate and they take it to the sink. Um, and they they help pick up if they're playing with the toys, they help put them away. And um, if they're outside and they're playing with the toys, then they help put those away. <coughs> because I want my children to do the same thing when they go over to their friend's house. Is I want them to have those manners. And so they, they all the kids have just gotten used to it. They know when, you know... I serve dinner that you know they sit down at the table they're served dinner and then after dinner it's their job to clear their plate it's their job to put their trash in the trash and so so on so but that's taken time and that's just taken just constantly reinforcing it um, so one of the last things I want you to do when you're creating your routine is I want to make sure you create cushions into that routine don't be so strict and only give yourself, um, you know, 30 minutes on something. Give yourself a time block to accomplish. Um, try allotting, you know, 15 minutes and say, you know, so it doesn't, you don't get to that point where you're like, oh my God, I gotta go, 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 go. Because that's not really how we want our days to go. We want our days to be very naturally flowing. Um, yes, that white space margin is very important. You want your day to flow like this. You don't want your day to go like this um, because that's not enjoyable. You're not going to be a blessing to be around because you're going to be grumpy pants at the end of the day because you're exhausted. And at the end of the day, we still want to have a smile on our face, be grateful for what we have and thankful that we had a wonderful day. And that can happen when we allow ourselves to just go with the flow and things aren't always going to go according to schedule. They're not always going to go uh, according to routine. Things happen. And that's why it's so important that we have our planners because you can say, that's fine. That's fine. I got my priority A done because I had a deadline. B and C, they didn't really have deadlines. I will move them. I'll move them because I was needed someplace else. My child needed me. They were sick today. Um, so that takes priority over everything. And so at the end of the day, you're still not going, oh my gosh, um, and just so down on yourself. But what you were still able to do, because you can still do it with a sick child, is you were still able to cycle laundry. You were still able to keep your you know, living space picked up and maintained. And that's where you want to work for. Because then <coughs> that routine is a blessing. And you're peaceful. Um, am I disciplined with my phone time? I'm on my phone all day long. I'll just be honest. I'm on my phone all day long, but I multitask like no other. <laughs> um, and the reason why I'm on my phone a lot of times during the day is because my job is on my phone. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm on my phone for work. Um, and then I even, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I even give myself buffer time and I like, all right, that's it. I'm shutting down for a second. And I'm going to play Candy Crush for 10 minutes. And I do. I sit down. I'm like, it's Candy Crush time. I'm sitting back. I'm not looking at Instagram. I'm not answering a message. I'm not looking at Etsy. I'm not sending anything to the printer. And I do. So I can just decompress for those 10 minutes. I play a little bit and I go, okay, now it's time to get back at it. Um, so you're just on your phone. Um, when I didn't have a job that required me to do it, I would actually put my phone down and I would say, so this is what I told myself, okay, fold this basket of laundry and put it away and then you can sit down and be on your phone for 15 minutes. And I would tell myself that, like, okay, phone's sitting here, go get this done and then you can do it. Because as a stay at home mom, I didn't have you know, this connection of friends. I didn't have, I didn't go anywhere. I mean, I was in my home all the time, days, weeks would go by and I wouldn't leave my house. And so 
my phone was really like my outlet to the world and so I craved it I needed it I needed that connection because I just was like I don't feel like a human being anymore I need people and that was the only people I could get was through texting um, a little bit in social media anything that he didn't monitor because um, he would monitor and check and see if I had been on Facebook this was prior to Jason you guys um, and so but I would also get in huge trouble if I didn't have certain things done at the end of the day. And I didn't want to get in trouble because I didn't want to walk on eggshells. Um, so I would do that. I would put my phone down and I would say, all right, Erica, go get X, Y, and Z done. And then you can be on your phone for a little bit. And it worked. It was hard, but it worked. Um, I would also do that with watching TV. I used to have the TV on all the time for the white noise because I just wanted to hear people talk that weren't little human beings. <laughs> just wanted to hear adults talk and that was my way. Um, but then I would get caught up watching it and so, you know, I would tell myself, you can have the TV on but you can't sit down. Yeah, so do not disturb works really well. Putting your phone where you can't get to it works really well. Um, and, and just start start little little things. Um, if you're gonna be on it, maybe do something that you can still be productive. <laughs> Excuse me, that you can still be productive. Um, I can listen to audiobooks or podcasts and still do dishes or still go through mail on the counter or still fold laundry and I'm still getting my connection. If it's a big problem, remove the problem. Remove the problem and say, I thank you guys. I'll get back to it um, in a little bit. Now, Facebook and stuff like that, that um, I do give myself set times that I'm going to um, check it. I usually check it like um, once every hour right now, but part of that is because I'm working. But I'll check it like once every hour. Both. Both. He would be like, what are you doing on Facebook? Why are you on Facebook? Who are you talking to? I'm not talking to anybody. I was posting a picture of our daughter. Yeah, right. I mean, it was bad. It, it was bad. It was, well, is the laundry done? It's, I'm working on it. Well, if it's not done, you shouldn't be on Facebook. So, yeah, it was... And I can a little bit laugh at it. Um, try, I, I try to laugh because if I don't laugh, I'm, I'll cry. Um, especially I got paperwork today from him. <laughs> and so I just want to go, seriously, dude. <laughs> like, you just can't control me anymore. This is just not going to happen. So, so yeah. So I'd have to reward myself. And so now I, you know, use it for work. Yeah, I know some of you get it. I know you totally get what I'm going through. Um, and so even now that I, you know, I mean, I have a Facebook group. I have other groups that I belong to. I have a lot of planner groups that I belong to. So I kind of want to know, you know, what's going on. I still give myself a set amount of time. I'm like, all right, I'll check it for a few minutes. And then I leave it alone. And I will come back. Notifications are a great thing on Facebook <laughs> because I can go through, check my notifications real quick and go, okay, I don't need to deal with any of that. It can wait until later. Um, mm. Janet, I can say that I have been there. So I know the feeling. I do know the feeling. So um, we built in time cushions and we've left space in our routine. And the reason why we leave space in our routine is because routines are supposed to be flexible. They're not supposed to constrict you. They're not supposed to control you. They're just supposed to provide you with a really great foundation and guidelines on how you go through your day. And Monday's routine may diff be different than Tuesday's and Thursday's might be just like Monday's and that's okay. You just want to kind of start creating this natural flow ebb and flow of your day and at the end of the day you can go today was a good day and it's calm and it's peaceful you will find you guys will will find that the more you get into a routine 
of what's being done, what's not being done, how you're handling things, your life becomes a lot more peaceful. And at the end of the day, you really can just go, okay, I'm ready for tomorrow. Um, and I really do believe that the, one of the hugest keys for that is creating routines in your life. Yeah, I do too. And that's why I will never tell anybody that divorce is wrong. Because you don't know the shoes that they're walking in. And you don't know what they've been through or the trenches that they've had to dig out of. And so I will never, ever, ever, ever tell somebody that divorce is wrong. Um, and I'm a Christian woman. And I believe in God. And I believe in marriage. And I believe in a commitment. Um, but both people need to be making that commitment at the same level um, as each other and they both need to be committed to God or it doesn't work they have to have a solid foundation period just so I will never ever tell anybody that divorce is wrong <clears throat> so and I know I'm sorry if I'm offending anybody but um, I don't know I'm not an advocate of oh psh, forget it let's just get a divorce that is not the type of a divorce I'm talking about I don't believe in those I think that's a cop-out I don't believe using divorce as a cop-out. Um, just like I don't believe in using abortion as birth control. However, <laughs> um, if you're raped and you get pregnant, I don't think that anybody should force you to have that child if you don't mentally, physically, and emotionally think that you can handle it and raise it. So there are extenuating circumstances to all of these topics and we cannot be so harsh as to say that our God would be that harsh. So, it's kind of how I leave it. There are other circumstances that we don't need to judge other people for because the only person that's going to judge us at the end of time is God himself. So, and you know what? I'm proud to say that when I stand before God, he'll say, way to go, but you should have done it sooner. <laughs> You should have done it sooner, and I tried to tell you, but you weren't listening. But way to go. You did it. And I know he will. So, I fully, fully, fully believe that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the Catholic Church is a little hard. Sorry. Yes, I'm not trying to go on a, you know, biblical rampage here. But... I've told my story on Scope. Some of you were in it, and I will tell it to anybody who asks me. I'm not ashamed of what I've gone through. I had a very long marriage when I was young. We were together for over 12 years, and I put my heart and soul into it, and he failed me. Numerous occasions he failed me, and then I was so run down, and I was so downtrodden that I allowed a very manipulative predator of a man take over my life because I was weak and I was exhausted and I didn't want to do it anymore. I was tired. I just wanted a man to be a man and he just wasn't that. He was in certain categories and then he just took it way, way too far to a point where nobody should have to deal with that kind of stuff. So anyways. All right, so we've talked a little bit about routines. Yeah, he made me a very weak person. A very, very weak person. He, So, we have talked about routines. Um, I'm going to give you a few key points to keeping these routines because we're actually staying on target time-wise. Amazing. All right, so my number one point to you guys, how to keep a routine and how to stay on track is what? Because I've told you this before. Keep it visible. You're not going to create a habit. You're not going to maintain this routine. You're not going to be able to change it up if you need to and fix things if you can't see it. If it's closed up with a pretty little band on it and it sits over on your desk, it's not going to do you any good. It's not going to do you any good. Open it up. Let it be seen. Let spaghetti stains get on it because the child touched it and, you know, you splattered a little bit of water on it. That's fine because then it's used and that's the way it should be. Let it be seen. Hello, Gracie. How are you? Check it. 
Yep, Scotty Stains won't get on it, and that's okay. Check it, check it, check it, check it, check it, check it, check it. Multiple times. If you're going, gosh, I can't remember. What was I supposed to get done today? Check it. Check it, check it, check it, check it. And take up space. Yeah. Yeah. I like the happy planner because it fits nicely on my counter. I can see it. You know, uh, I don't, I personally, I can't do um, personal planners for my routines. This is really great for me to journal in. So it doesn't stay open. I open it up at night. I journal in. I close it. You did. That's awesome. Um, and then, yeah, I like to be aware of what's happening tomorrow. Yes, there is. Um, it will be on YouTube. A chaotic blessing. Same thing. Um, so complete your task in the order of priority. Runs out. There's a lot of, there's a lot. That'll be in August, September. Uh, I would say my two favorite personal size are either Webster's Color Crush or Doki, honestly. Uh, and for the price, because they're about the same, um, I, I like both of them. I don't like the inserts, hence the reason why I had a sneak peek on our group the other night <laughs> of something that I have coming out. <laughs> Um, really, really soon, and I actually have some in my planner right now. <laughs> so, um, and that's not to say that there are other inserts out there, but I kind of just needed to do what I needed to do, and I found a gap. They are hard to write. I found a gap in some people's inserts, and so I kind of wanted to do it. It was not a terrible sneak peek, Janet. You just were mad because you couldn't see the whole thing. <laughs> um, so let me finish up some of these points real quick and then maybe, maybe I'll do a sneak peek because I do have two months worth in my planner. Um, so complete, yeah, for any personal or A5 size. Um, so complete your task in the order of priority. Don't let yourself get distracted by, oh, this piece of paper needs to be filled out. Is that priority number one? If it's not, leave it alone. Go back to your priority number one because once you get priority number one done, you can get two and three and so on, and you're going to get more things done. Yes, either I or Cynthia Zircone might do that for me since this is a long scope. I might have her do that. She offered to take some notes. Um, I have the outline of it, but that I will be doing. But some of the key things I say in between would be nice if somebody caught it. Um, adjust, you're welcome. Adjust your schedule as needed. If your morning is not going the way you planned for it to go, and your dog got sick all over the floor, and you had to stop what you're doing to clean it up, then change your afternoon because you still want to get the stuff done that you prioritize. So put some stuff on the back burner. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You can plan on planning one on one is at least gonna go for an hour, if not longer. Hour time. Sorry, I try to jam pack these episodes in with a lot, and then sometimes we kind of get off on tangents, and then I have to come back. It's a good thing I have notes, right? <laughs> Yeah, even dog puke is a mom's job. And so it messed up your whole morning, right? You messed up, you had to change your clothes because you got stuff on your clothes, and you had to mop the floor, you had to do all this stuff, and now your priority A and B never got done. So do them in the afternoon and say, you know what, see, you're just going to have to go till tomorrow because stuff came up. Um, but then that way, your tasks aren't going to keep piling up because you are adjusting to fit them in. And then maybe then tomorrow you have like four things that absolutely have to get done. And so you go, you know what? I need to get up 30 minutes earlier tomorrow. Just tomorrow so I can catch up. It's not a big deal. You're figuring something out. Do you know what I learned when I was sick for those six weeks? <laughs> You missed it, Amanda? I'll show I might show it tonight. 
I sent your order out today, Amanda Unfolded. <coughs> I remember specifically because she uses the name Amanda Unfolded in that scene as her name. <laughs> yes, I learned that too. I also learned that, you know what? It's really not that big of a deal. Are the kids alive at the end of the day? Did they eat something? Doesn't have to be perfect. Have the shipping text turned on already? I don't, I don't know. Are you talking about an Etsy? I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm, I've stopped learning about Etsy because I'm not going to be using it much longer. So, yeah, exactly. Do they have clean underwear on? Did they, are they alive? <laughs> like, that's what I learned in my six weeks. And it was a hard lesson for me because things were not picked up. They were not the way I wanted them to. And it caused me, I was getting anxiety and I was like, what are you doing to yourself? Now, at the end of the six weeks, no, I will not have Etsy anymore. Um, I'm going on my own website and I will be running strictly through there. They will overlap a little bit, but then I'll just be on my website. Um, and so I was getting anxious about stuff because when things aren't picked up and organized, it I kind of get into a panic attack a little bit. Um, yeah, keep the people alive and feed the people. And so... It took me a few days to get things back in manageable order, and then once it was, I was like, okay, okay. But you know what? Nobody died during that time when it wasn't manageable. Nobody, nothing was wrong because things were on the counter, and it was a wreck. Like, to me, it was a wreck. In my mind, it was a wreck because I have a skewed vision of, of what a wreck is because I was so brainwashed for six plus years about how my house had to stay. And so... Now I'm retraining it going, you know what? There's just a little bit out. This is not bad. Um, there's no bugs crawling on my floor. You know, the trash is still in the trash. I mean, like, I, I just, I kind of had to take it to extremes. But um, it, it took that to get it out of the head of, like, no, there doesn't have to be vacuum lines in the carpet every single day. Jason is my third marriage. Yes. Unfortunately, I had a second marriage that I wish I didn't have to count, but I legally was married to him, so I have to count it, which stinks because it was horrible, 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 horrible. Can I say horrible one more time? And I really, I mean, like Jason and I even talked about that. I give my first marriage a lot, um, yeah. I give my first marriage a lot of credit. We really, really tried. We got married young. We just weren't on the same page. Um, he never grew up. He never wanted to be responsible. He couldn't hold a job. Um, he was all about partying. And by the time I got into my 30s and I had, you know, three children, because I was raising his son, my stepson, and we had two together, I was like, this is ridiculous. I've given you so many years to fix it, and you're not getting better. You're getting worse. And I refuse to live my life this way. I refuse to wake up in the middle of the night at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning wondering where my husband's at. Like, that's, I'm done. I'm just done. And so after 12 years, I just said, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I'm not going to. And I'm glad I did. Um, he's a good, he has a good heart. Um, I'm sure he's a good guy down deep inside. He still to this day cannot keep a job can't keep a job he is all over the place and um, he's not the greatest father so I, I did the right thing um, I just unfortunately I ran into the arms of somebody who was a predator who preyed on weak women when they're down and about um, and I know this now because I found out a lot about his history when I had to dig in and really dig myself out of it I learned a lot that I no, and that's his ha that's his um, pattern. Um, he is a predator, and he preys on women, and usually younger ones who are struggling, who have kids, or who have no money, who are on the verge of you know being homeless. Like that's what he does, and he did it again. I proved it. I I'm right because he did it again, 
and he's already <laughs> he already did it again before we even divorced. Um, and so, anyways, it, that's just who he is. And I can clearly, honestly say that I believe that he is dumb and that there is part of him that's probably possessed at some point in time because that's how bad he is. <coughs> so, anyways, then when you're finished <laughs> with all the things you've gotten done today because you're doing the routine and you're doing things you're supposed to do, you're going to check them off. You're going to check off all your tasks that are completed. So at the end of the night, what do we do? We take 10 to 15 minutes to look at our planner and go... What does my next day hold? What's scheduled that I can't change? And what's my routine going to be like? And so then the more times that you do this, you'll find that you start naturally creating a routine that works for you. It's not a printable that somebody gave you. It's not a Pinterest survey that somebody put out there. Of, this is how you do it. It's not the 10 best ways um, to run your morning. Okay, you guys, it's your best way to run your routine. And that's what you need to create. Um, do some of these people have some really great tips and hints? Sure, and I'm not putting them down. I'm not putting any one particular blogger or periscoper or YouTuber down. What I am saying is, is that it's not going to work for you if it's not natural. Yeah, if it's not, but if it's not natural for you, it's never going to work. And then you're going to feel like you're never living up to this printable. You're never living up to this blog post. You're never living up to so-and-so's book. And we need to stop doing that to ourselves. You can learn a lot from reading that stuff. Um, you can garner great knowledge, but you are never going to accomplish it if it is not your natural routine if it doesn't flow for you and that's what I want you guys to do we need to stop getting so caught up and she said this and she does this and she does this and she does this and this printable says I need to do it this way and I need to clean this way knock it off you guys because you know what the only thing that's ever going to do is to make you feel like you're failing you're always going to feel like you're failing Yeah, well, if it helps somebody, it helps somebody. I'm always willing to talk to somebody if they want to. Um, yeah, but we're doing it to ourselves. We are creating our own terrible self-esteem. We do it to ourselves because we try to read all these books. We try to read all the blog posts. We try to do all of these challenges. We try to do somebody's printable. We try to, you know, complete somebody's program. But if it doesn't work with how your brain flows, if it doesn't work with how your family structure is, then all you're going to do at the end of the day is you're going to feel like a failure. And so what better way to not feel like a failure than create the routine that works for you? Exactly. Shiny object syndrome. Now, if in your life you're having a hard time figuring out what your routine is, then I would be more than willing to help you on an individual basis. But I will not sit here and tell you guys as a group or as a community, this is how you do it. I will give you structure. I'll give you some guidelines to work on. But I'm not going to say, this is how you run your day. From 9 o'clock to this time, this is what you're going to do. And from this time to this time, this is what you're going to do. Because it doesn't work, you guys. It doesn't work. You have to create this routine for yourself so that your routine and your schedule can start to go like this and then they just work together. And then when something breaks, it easily will get back together the next time because it always has to function like this. <laughs> That's fine. We covered a lot tonight. We covered a lot tonight. Then the last and final thing that I want you guys to do is in the evening, every evening, if you like to listen to music, if you like a cup of tea, if you like to watch TV, if you like to read a book, whatever it is, 
pick a few things. I want you to put it in your planner of the things that you enjoy that are rewards to you. And then every evening, I want you to spend five, ten minutes doing it. It's not a great huge chunk of time. If you like to doodle, if you want to play in your planner, whatever it is that you want to do, that is your reward time. And you're going to write about it and say, Tay, I accomplished this and my reward was this. And spend a few moments to just go, that's fine. <laughs> It's fine, seriously. I've been there and I've done it. But if your guilty pleasure is playing Candy Crush, then play Candy Crush for 10, 15 minutes, 30 minutes if you have time sitting on the couch. Let them be your reward. Let, you know, reading the book or watching. I love, I love watching TV, you guys. But I can't do it during the day. So that's why I have Hulu because I can watch last night's episodes tonight at 10, 11 o'clock at night or anytime I want to. So I do that. That's my relaxed time. And usually I'm sitting there with a the planner and I'm <laughs> writing stuff down and I'm not exactly completely relaxing, but I'm rewarding myself and then I'll have a little bit of coffee ice cream and I'll feel really good because that's my reward. I worked hard today. I put my feet up. Yeah. Yeah. And I want you guys to actually write it down. What did you do? Um, yeah, I think so. I get a lot of shows on Hulu. I don't get Bravo though. Which just think, cause I like watching Bravo. Cause they make me feel better about my life. Cause they're such miserable people. <laughs> Sorry. They have all this money and they're such miserable, miserable people. And it makes me laugh. Coffee ice cream. I love it. It's my best. Yeah. Oh, no. That's, that. like, Jason and I joke about it. He does. He falls asleep, and but we're sitting next to each other, so I'm okay with that because I know he's tired. And the moment that man stops moving, he's asleep. So he falls asleep, and I prop my legs up. He's usually got me my ice cream by then. And I eat my little bit of ice cream because I get the little, you know, hog dust cups because that's about all I can do. And it must be a Jason thing. And I sit back and I watch whatever show I want to watch and I might journal in my planner if I brought it downstairs. Um, sometimes I play on my iPad and I come up with a new design while I'm sitting there. So, but that's my reward. And I reward myself every day. Every day I reward myself with something. So, I want you guys to start doing it. And the reason why I want you to is because you'll find you actually start feeling better about yourself. Your self-esteem will rise. It'll go, wow, I got a lot done today. I did a good job. And now I can reward myself. Because you don't need somebody else to do it for you. You don't. But this way, it's still getting done. No, but that sounds delicious. I had moose tracks the other day. Oh, salted caramel? That one was amazing. So anyways, yeah, I know, I'm ready for my ice cream. So I will put these highlighted points on um, the Facebook group. If you're not a part of the Facebook group, come on over, have fun with us. We talk about anything and everything. It's not just me preaching to you. Um, but if you're part of the Facebook group, you do get sneak peeks and you'll get discounts that nobody else will. Like knowing that I messed up on the coupon that goes all, to all of the customers and I spelled it wrong. <laughs> so now anybody part of the Facebook group can use it at any point in time because I messed up. Um, the Facebook group, just go to bit.ly forward slash capital C chaotic capital B blessing and I'll take you straight to it. You filled your cart, Janet. Yeah, I'm feeling better. I just, I was worn down. I slept wrong, and so, like, my shoulder, it's still a little tender. My shoulder up to my neck was just really hurting to the point where, like, it was making me feel ill. 
And I didn't want to come on here and talk to you guys about routines and schedules and be, I need to be chipper about it because it's something I love and going, I just don't feel good. And then the next thing you need to do, I mean, you guys wouldn't have loved it. I mean, it just wouldn't have worked, right? Um, cause part of it is that you guys can see I'm passionate about this kind of stuff. This is my passion. I love, 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 love setting up routines and organizing. Um, I always have, I always will. It's in my blood. So for those of you who have stuck around, would you like to see a sneak peek? Maybe. Yay! See, then it worked out for the majority of us. Yeah, see, and that's the thing, is on the Facebook group, I can actually post. So if you're not a part of it, that's a good place to kind of get updates because I can just post and say, sorry guys, think something's come up. And then you know, um, it's, it's the same as my name. Yep, sometimes I do Facebook Live to say hi, check in, see what everybody's up to, to see if you've been doing the challenges. <laughs> the Rose Patch, what's your first name? Remind me, because my mind just went blank. You don't, you don't have what either. Cindy. Okay, thanks. Okay, you have to keep the C and the B capital. And then if you still can't find it, send me a Facebook message. I'll send you a link. And that'll be better for everybody. Alright, you guys. So, I'll tell you what I've done. I don't particularly like some of the... That's fine. You don't have to post pictures all the time. You don't have to. So, I decided that um, I really wanted to do the guts to planners. And the reason being is because as I'm using some of these, I'm like, this is too small for me, but I love the size, or I don't really like this layout, but I like the size of this planner. And so as I've kind of progressed, I still really love making stickers, but I really, really enjoy making inserts. And I figured, well, why not make the guts to the insert too? If people are coming to your shop, um, no, I don't always, I don't always. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, if people are coming to your shop, and the majority of people are, well, I mean, they love your stickers, but they're also loving the inserts, then why not have the guts available too, and they can just do a one-stop shop, right? So I'm kind of killing two birds in one sound. Make a layout that has a little bit more room. Um, right now, my free John erasable ones are my favorite. And um, probably Le Pens or Zig Pens right now. But I want to try the ink, the new Ink Joys. Um, because I need to find some new pens. So I'm in that stage where I really need a new pen. But, oh, and I really like these. The Ink Joy Stylus by Papermate. Because it has a stylus at the end. And I love the way they write. I know it sounds cheesy and they're inexpensive, but I love these things. So, I start off with doing a monthly spread. And the reason, there's logic behind this, I promise you. Um, the reason why I did it this way is because, yes, it's an Ink Joy stylus by Papermate. See? So, the reason why I did this is I wanted there to be larger boxes to actually be able to write in. I wanted to take up all of the page and then I wanted a different spin on where the month 
layout was because in all honesty, in a personal science planner, I'm not writing too much on these side columns. I'm just, I don't. And so there's still room to write if you want to, but the boxes are a lot larger. They literally go from the top of the page to the bottom of the page. If I can get that in there. Like that's how much I've spread it apart. It goes from the top to the bottom. If you want to wash your edges, there's still enough room to wash your edges. They're large enough. You can still decorate your um, boxes. So that is what I am starting off with. And then what I decided to do was <coughs> the backs of them are just plain. I will. All the personal stickers fit, fit them, but I will actually make boxes that will fit it. Um, the backs of them are plain, so you can do anything you want with them. You can wash your months together if you want. Um, you can make lists. You can decorate it any way you want. Um, but I like having my month and then my weeks that go with that month. I don't like having a section of here's my month, then the next tab is here my, here's my weeks. I don't, my brain doesn't work that way. It's I, here's my monthly recap or my month ahead. And here's the weeks that follow. Here's my month. Here's the weeks that follow. <laughs> so I want it to flow that way in my planner. And I don't like that, like the Webster Crush, Color Crush pages, the month interrupts that um, to the point where, like, one week's over here and the other week's way over here four pages later. Like, I, no, doesn't work for me. So, Sorry. So they will stay plain. You know, you'll have your month layout. They'll be plain here. And then your next sheet will um, will be plain. And then the insides will be your weekly layout. No, I don't have the weekly finished yet. I should have the weekly finished in the next few days. So, um, and I have... Uh, it's not up here with me. I think I have like three different um, weekly views that we're going. I'm going to be doing. <laughs> it's too bulky. I'm sorry. Um, I did change the paper that I'm using for the guts of the planner. It's a little bit um, thinner. It still has the brightness to it. It's still very smooth in texture. Um, it's still very high quality, but because it's going to be the guts, it will be... It will be, okay, just like in the Happy Planner, you'll have your, yes, you'll have your week, then you'll flip your page, I still have my color crush, you'll flip your pages and then you'll have your weeks, and then you'll have your month, and then you'll have your weeks. And the reason why I'm not laying them out like where they're front to back and back to front, um, because I would have to increase the cost to do that, um, lining them up to be able to print that way is a lot and I also want there to be extra like paper for you guys to write on. I know that kind of sounds silly, but um, I love having like little extra areas I can put sticky notes or I can make a special list. Um, and that's kind of how I'm designing them. And I, uh, I want to work with them and I can show everybody else how to work that way. Um, it just gives some extra, extra, extra instead of having, you know, back to back, back to back weeks. You have some extra space in there. Um, I'm hoping they will be available very soon. Um, I'm not going to have them listed on Etsy. I'm going to have them listed on my website, and um, my website is probably 70% done. So, good night. Good night. Send me a message. So, um, these will be up on the, my new website. I did figure out shipping. Shipping is going to be flat rate shipping. Um, there's three different rates depending on the, um, how much you're ordering. <clears throat> yeah, that would be a great place to brain dump. You can still decorate that side, put stuff on it, make list all you want. So, um, and they will be um, in every size. They, well, I should say, they will be in personal size and A5 size to start with. I'm not quite sure that I'm going to do Happy Planner because I really love Happy Planner. 
and I don't know that I want to mess with that. <laughs> but um, for for ones that you know you can really just customize a little bit more. Um, the personal and the A5, anything that's on a six ring, it's really easy to do. So I will definitely be doing those sizes. Um, I most likely will do Doki too. Yeah, I will be handling all international shipping uh, privately. Um, for when I go on my website, I will have um, where you can leave me a message. And actually, kind of what will happen is you'll pay um, you'll pay what everybody else is paying and then I will process your shipping outside and figure out the true co uh, cost you won't have tracking on it so I can give you the cheapest and so then I'll say okay um, to ship yours I need two more dollars or whatever it is I'll just tell you the exact difference so you're not paying any overages so that's the best I can do for international shipping because it's just hard because you get a different price. I can ship to Canada and to six of you and every single person will be a way different price. So I just figured I'll just do it case by case. If you're an international customer, then we'll get to know each other very, very well. <laughs> we'll just know each other on a first name basis because I'll be like, Sure, no problem. Last time it was this much, so that's how much I'm going to charge you. And um, so we'll just we'll just have to figure it out on that one. It's just so it's just so hard. Um, and I don't want to lose out, you know, and get my feet cut off because I'm not charging enough. Um, so shipping rates currently right now are there's a three dollar rate, a five dollar rate, and an eight dollar. No, three twenty five. 625 and 9. I think that's what I had to do. Um, and it's based on the weight of what you put into your cart because I have weighed everything to a precise. And so um, if you put in a Cultivating the Lovely kit and five sheets of stickers, it will calculate how much that weight is and then it will put you in um, one of those groupings. And so you could be in the $5. Uh, shipping rate this time, but the next time you only order, you know, four sheets of stickers, you're going to pay three dollars. Um, I have, well, no, I, I have my computer. I use my computer as my postage machine. <clears throat> so you would be grouped into three dollars, and then if you go over a certain weight, then you're in the five dollar, and that has a huge bracket. And then anybody who is asking me to ship more than a pound. Of stuff you're gonna pay the nine dollars um, so that's the easiest way that I can figure out to do it that would be kind of easy so oh I used to use a postage machine there they were great I love mine at work man I'd weigh it hook up to the, the scale hooked up to the postage machine it and then I'd fly it through <laughs> would just stamp my stuff I wish I could afford that. Those machines are expensive. It would be nice though. It really would. Yeah. Yeah, you do have to program in size. You do have to program in the size. And so you have to make sure you're selecting the right size before you weigh it. Um, if you're ordering on Etsy, or when you order on my website. If you're ordering on Etsy, um, yes, you have to tell me what, well, you select which planners, yeah. Um, on Etsy, it gives you an option to select which planner you have, so it automatically tells me. The only time you need to tell me what planner you're using is if you say no holes. I need to know what size of inserts I'm still giving you. Because you could ask me for a happy planner size with no holes, or you can ask me for A5 or personal with no holes. I still need to know the size of the pages that you want. So that's the only time you need to leave it in the comments. Everything else, you have to actually select an option. It tells you. Yum. Oh, you guys, I used my pressure cooker today. I made steel oats, steel cut oats. Yeah, nine holes are happy planner. That's standard. 
Doki is eight. So, you just select Happy Planner and I punch it. They were amazing. They were amazing. They were amazing. They were amazing. And it took like five minutes. Five minutes prep time. Five minutes cook time. And done. It was so cool. <laughs> it was so cool. I was probably a little, way too excited about it. Way too excited about it. So, tomorrow I'm going to pick out something else. I'm going to try something else tomorrow. So, alright, that's what's going on. So, yes, I do have monthly and weekly inserts and a couple other special inserts coming for when my website launches. You did? Oh, no problem. That sounds good. Potatoes and green beans. My neck needs to crack. All right, y'all. Any questions about tonight that I can answer live? If not, I'm heading out. I have ice chunks in my <laughs> drink, so they're like going into my mouth. I actually am probably going to print a few more things because I had somebody place a huge order. And so I need to print it all for tomorrow. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for joining me, you guys. As always, it's been wonderful. Yeah, they're up for 24 hours up for 24 hours and I will be moving them to YouTube I promise I will be moving them to YouTube all of my old ones are already on YouTube I just need to start my new routine of moving daily <laughs> to YouTube so I need to add it to my routine see another thing I gotta do so you guys have a great night and I will talk to you tomorrow on the flip side if you have any questions you can send me a Facebook message come and join the Facebook group you can post it there well right now the only place you can order is on Etsy right now my website is locked it's password locked so you can see the outside of it but you can't see the inside <laughs> so I have a few more things I want to get listed um, over there before I do the switch so Come on over to Etsy. It's still open and running for a little bit longer. So, all right. I will see you guys. Oh, okay. Sorry. I don't know where that came from. I will see you guys tomorrow for sure. Have a good night.